What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Tackle Tuesday. Now, in this episode, I want to make a continuation, I guess, of uh, last week's episode of Jerk Baits. I have some comments, social media, and some people that want me to do a video on how I retrieve and how I fish jerk baits. Because I kind of just went over the difference between three trebles, two trebles, and switching your hooks out to circle hooks. If you guys haven't seen that, uh, just head over to last week's Tackle Tuesday video. And this week, I'll go a little bit more in depth on cadence and retrieve. And to tell you the truth, cadence and retrieve, it really, really varies to me. Um, first up, let's go by different types of jerk baits. You have floating, you have sinking, you have suspending, and you have, what do you call it, uh, slow sinking. Now, you probably, there's probably tons more different types up there that I didn't do, but those are the top four to choose from. And my two that I mainly use everywhere is a slow sinking and suspending. I really like suspending because you can really pause that for a long time in the strike zone in front of that bass and not worry about anything. Slow sinking is nice because when you throw it out there and you can let it sink for just a little bit to the depths you want and then you can start doing the cadence. But uh, those are my top two that I use all the time. So when you see me use them, I use them. Now this one here I have, this one's a floating one. What's nice about floating ones for bank fishermen or anyone else is if you do snag or lose a lure that floats, it's going to float to the surface and you most likely can get it back. I'm not going to say you can because I've seen something that was so far away in the water. I'm just like, nah, I'm not getting it. But that kind of helps. kind of makes it easy a little bit. So, uh, and trust me, with some alligators and stuff and they bite you off, they'll sling a lure and you can get it back a little bit later. Which is really nice, but uh, jerk baits. This one is just a random jerk bait. I don't even remember the brand. I think this was like what Mad Bites used to make back in the day, or it could be Bass Pro. It's not really labeled, but I'm just gonna use it as an example because it was just over here. I just grabbed it. What I like to do is, uh, mate, when you throw it out there and you have a suspending or even a slow sinking, once I throw it as far as I can out as possible, um. I'll give it a few good turns to get it down to depth because this thing will wobble like a crankbait when you're retrieving it and a lot of times I get strikes like that but I'll get it down to depth and I'll let it set for just a second and then I'll start my cadence and my cadence is a lot like a topwater popper if you guys haven't seen any of those videos I have some made up but it's more of like a pop pop pause and you can pause for ever I mean suspending you can pause 30 40 seconds a minute I was pause for a minute one time and just see my line start drifting um, but then you, I go pop, pop, pause, and I'll, I'll change it up. I'll do like three pops, like pop, 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 pause. I'll do one pop, pause. You just really got to find what those fish want. Most of the time, they'll hit it on the pause or right after the pause when you're about to start um, jerking it again. But that's going to help you guys, I think, in that retrieve. The main retrieve I use because it's Florida and in the fall and in the winter times, I'll use a pop, pop, pause and then a pop and a pause. When it's summertime, uh, I'll use the three the three pops. I'll just, you know, I'll work it faster in the summertime because they're more active. But then again, in the wintertime, they're gonna be a little more lethargic, a little more slowing down. They're gonna wanna eyeball and look at that thing a lot longer. So you're gonna wanna pause it a, little, a lot longer. You wanna fish it a lot slower in the fall and wintertime. That being said, right now it's probably like 60 degrees outside. The water temps are about the same it's not that bad at all right now in Florida so I have nothing to complain about fishing's good uh, that's why I live here in Florida <laughs> but uh, it's a uh, I hope that helps you guys I hope that helps the guys who's asking the questions about the jerk bait retrieve retrieve and I'm gonna talk a little bit too I'm rigging it up now I always go from about 10 I say about 10 to 12 pounds and I do floor coat or floor carbon because you're going to want to get down to the depth. It's not like a floating bait top order because you don't want to use mono. And if you have braid, that's okay. Um, 
I've I've fished with them with braid before, but I always like I like to add a leader, and I'll add like a short leader. I mean, like a short, just so it doesn't mess the fill of the lure up for you. So uh, one more thing is uh, the rod. When I'm using the jerk baits, I like a medium action rod, not a medium heavy, not a heavy. I've used them on all. I've had issues with using different ones, but the best hookup ratio and landing a fish has been on the medium action rod and I think it's because it has that better bend anything with trebles I'm telling you guys I'll preach it and preach it if you have anything with trebles you want a rod with bend um, especially with using fluorocarbon floor coat line um, but mono line you have a little bit of a stretch a little bit of giveaway it's okay because I'll use a little bit medium heavy heavier rod on top water mono but I'm telling you you want to land more fish you're gonna need a medium action rod. You'll love me. And the good thing about medium action rod doing jerk baits too, when you're using a heavier rod, when you go to to pop it, the um the lure comes back more to you. When you have a medium action rod, that rod's gonna bend um because of the force this is against the water. It'll bend and this thing will just do what it needs to do for a little a little action across. And I hope you guys enjoy that. And I'm going to give a good example at the end of this video. So continue on after I say get out and fish. And watch that little clip I got. I got one I caught last year that was a really nice one. And this was like during fall, spring season. I actually can't remember. But it was one of those. It was a great day out. Jerkbait was on fire that week. And I hope you guys enjoy. Oh, there's some fishing line all up in that tree. Ooh. Oh, like a bump. Oh yeah, that's a bump. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, a head shaker right there, buddy. <laughs> He's pretty too. Look at the color on him. Stop it, stop it. I don't want, I don't want the trouble in my finger. Oh, feel the teeth on this guy. I said feel the teeth on this guy. You know that? Mm -hmm. When the teeth are slick, uh, they're crawling. Oh, I'm going to have to. Right. Here. I got it. It's a little quicker. No, it's a Bass Pro Shop special. Yeah, I want to get him back quick. He's about three pounds. I'm going to fall in trying to get him back. Sorry, buddy. He'll be okay with that cold water. Help, my baby's whining in there. I might have to get back. So I hope that helps you guys. And... Until next time, if you guys have any questions like that, feel free to ask and below, and I'll try to make a video for it, just like, just like this one, a little more in depth. So I'm gonna put this one, uh, like Tackle Tuesday. I can't remember what episode was last, like 4.5 or something. So, uh, but I hope you guys enjoy. Remember, hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, and get out and fish.